So guys, we're getting around to taking a look at the TRM Atom that I had come in. It's a great knife and I don't know why I put it off so long, but we're finally gonna take a look at it and I got a production assistant that's currently licking my leg. The uh, new production assistant has assumed his duties in full as a production assistant. Are you gonna stay there? Are you gonna stay there? Okay, back to the knife. All right, guys, we are looking at the TRM Atom. Now, I've carried this for a little while now. Uh, you guys saw the first impressions video. This is a knife that's been around for a while and I'm just getting around to it. I kind of feel as though I screwed up by not reviewing this knife because this is a great knife. It's not without its faults. We'll talk about that closer to the end. Let's get some specs out of the way. You are looking at a all overall length of eight point, or I'm sorry, eight and three sixteenths inches. Closed for an 11 sixteenths. Thickness is 0 0.390 with a weight of three ounces. That is a very, very light knife. This is a very easy knife to carry. Uh, blade length is 3.5 inches. The thickness 0 0.90 inches, which gives you a very good thin blade stock. Uh, it's in CPM 20 CV. And it is a liner lock with G10 scales. Now, I do know this knife is out of stock currently. Um, and uh, it's one a lot of people like. So thumb studs only action on this. Um, so that might be one for other people. Let's do some quick size comparison. Your first knife's gonna be Spyderco PM2. You can see they're pretty similar in size. I'm gonna try and use knives that everybody knows unless I've got something unusual in my pocket. So there's your first knife, your next knife for size comparison. Another knife most of you guys are gonna know, the Benchmade 940. You can see it's a good bit longer than the Benchmade 940. It's got a broader blade. So your final knife for size comparison, as always, one of the best knives ever made and designed, the Chris Reeves Sabenza Large 21. You can see this has got a little bit less of a blade to handle ratio than the Sabenza, but overall they are just really close in size. Love this knife, you can't go wrong with one. Let's get this out of the way and talk about this knife. So I did a pretty quick turnaround on this knife because while I had never reviewed it or carried it for very long, I've messed with this particular knife a lot. This belongs to my friend Tino. And I have to say, this is a great, great EDC knife. You have got a superb blade in very thin and light uh, format to carry. The 20 CB blade is ground down to a nice behind the edge thickness, but what really does it is this nice broad grind that they did. The blade came screaming sharp. Now, I did not have to do anything with this other than touch it up on a ceramic rod. I screamed through a lot of cardboard with this. This cuts very well. It's got a very, very good blade shape for cutting. You've got a lot of flat and then a little belly at the very tip. It's got a really nice distal taper that thins down to a nice piercing tip. So if you need to do something like cut out outlines or get in and cut around like a container or something like that, or if you've got to pierce with this, it's going to do very well. Really nicely done G10 uh, scales that are really flat, but they did, they did a really good job just knocking off enough edge to make it comfortable. It doesn't have hot spots for as flat and hard as those edges may look. Um, really nicely constructed. I like their, I like the way they did their backs or their standoffs. I like something that has more than two. Uh, it gives it a unique look. And then the liners come up and are visible up here, which gives you a little bit more support. You can see it, it's a fairly thick liner on this. So you know that's a very robust, very strong knife. You can see how thick the liner is on this. Access to the lock bar is just brilliant. Uh, the way they did it, it doesn't feel uncomfortable in hand and it gives you some of the best access to the lock bar I've had on a knife in a very long time. One of the other things I wanted to mention is how well this blade is finished. This tumble that they did on this is just beautifully done. You can't see any milling lines or grind lines. Their markings on the blade are a, they look very stamped. Um, and I like that much better than the laser engraved. That's really in there. That is stamped in the steel. Um, so it's beautiful on that. And then their logo is nice and deep and it gives it a nice contrast. And they obviously did this before they tumble because you know how it's soft in the edges and you've got the, the darkening in there. It's just beautiful. Those are just some of those little things that we look at in knives. Action on it is decent. It's got a nice, decent action. You can snap it or you can snow ro uh, slow roll it. 
Um, all of the hardware is, uh, it's a keyed pivot. I've had this apart. All the hardware is really well um, in place and it's not a difficult knife to disassemble. Pocket clip is a pretty comfortable pocket clip. There's no hot spot. It sits nice and deep in the pocket. So you can carry this forward and it sits at a level where it's not gonna poke when you sit down. And then the thumb studs on it are just a very attractive style thumb stud. They are different than, I don't think I've had a knife that had thumb studs like that. So you've got a hard edge if you want it, but you can also just put your thumb on the top of it and just swing it open and it's not sharp as opposed to all the other knives. I have this one here. On this one, you gotta come at it from the side. If you put your thumb on the top of it, it's uncomfortable. You, you know what I'm saying? Like a Sabenza, you gotta come at it from the side. This is a very good thumb stud design. You just put the pad of your thumb on it and swing it open. There's a lot of surface on that. And it gives it a very attractive look. And like I said, reversed thumb studs on both sides. Now, that being said, as good as this knife is and as much as I like it, it does have some negative things. Oh, I was gonna say lock up on it. Lock up on it is really good. There is no blade play. There is no wiggle and it, it locks up really, really well. I did spine whack this, no issue with lock up on that. So with all that being said, there's some negative things we do have to talk about. They're all my opinions, so please don't get upset. Uh, guys at TRM, don't get upset. I do love this knife. So, but real quick, you guys check out Coffee Brand Coffee and then we'll be right back. Guys, I'm not gonna shy away from this one. Coffee Brand Coffee is my preferred coffee of choice, not just because their coffee is amazing. If you haven't tried their roaster's choice, I definitely recommend it. It is amazing. But they're a company that does not get into wokeness. They don't get into wokeness. They don't get into conservatism. They are completely, completely non-political, apolitical. I love that. They also have great coffee. You can check them out with the link down below. It saves you 5% at checkout. Um, coffee Brand Coffee is a channel sponsor. They've done a lot to support. They have an amazing company to work with. They've got amazing coffee, flavored coffees, ice coffee packs they've got tea and cocoa so go check them out with the link down below it saves you and it's a guilt-free purchase because they will not support causes that you don't agree with and they have a money-back guarantee so if you don't like the coffee they will give you back your money so like i said there are a couple things and most of these are just things for me these are not like issues with the knife i have big hands so that's where a lot of this comes from uh the first thing is the thumb stud on this side is worthless. I cannot deploy the knife from that side the way I would want safely without fear of cutting myself. I can't get enough purchase on it to like reverse flick it. Um, I think this would have been fine with just one thumb stud. I know that I like symmetry, but it seems like kind of they wasted the material because it's so close. Uh, next thing, while you do have superb, some of the best access to the lock bar, that means you didn't need to do this jimping. And it's not just that it's, the jimping is sharp. So there are some people with softer hands than me that would find that uncomfortable. I find them to be a little sharp. So um, it is just one of those things where, it, like if you give yourself, if you give people that much access, you could have just knocked that over and rounded it and made it soften instead of giving it the jimping. I don't know if the thought process was maybe with gloves or something like that. Um, next thing. While I do love how thin this knife is, this is another knife that kind of gets out of the alignment. I want the knife, you see how it's out of alignment there. If this knife was a little bit thicker, it would address the cut the way I want. See how it's more aligned. You can see when I've got this knife, it's lined up with the bones of my hand as opposed to being rolled out like this one is when I just grab it, like that natural grab, I have to adjust and then it doesn't feel as comfortable. Um, Next thing, the action is, while it's smooth, it's a lot like a Sabenza, that might be something that puts people off. Um, it has a tendency to not want to flick all the way or you miss the thumb studs, it'll do a partial deployment like that. Um, not such a big issue, like I said, because I love the fact you can get on that pad of that uh, with the pad of your thumb and slow roll it, but I would have preferred more than one deployment method. And then the final thing, the, the last thing, uh, and you guys are probably already gonna know, the pocket clip, it's an aluminum pocket clip, so it has a lot of spring in it, and it's a great pocket clip, really comfortable. When I deploy the knife and I get my fingers on it, I can feel the pocket clip skate along the G10. You can see the shiny spot where it just does it naturally. Uh, it's not that it's loose or anything, it's milled in nicely like that. Uh, and then the, the very, very final thing, I am not a fan of T6 screws. I'm gonna start saying this about all knives. There's no reason at this point we can't do T8 on most things. Uh, T6 screws, it's not that they're not good screws. 
Um, they are good for a lot of things like a pocket clip or something that doesn't have to be really tight. But a lot of guys, a lot of times guys will try to tighten these body screws down and strip them. And then you really don't have any recourse because you can't get them out. You can't replace them for a lot of knives. So I'm just over the whole T6 screws. I would prefer everything just have T8 or T9 heads, um, even if they are a little larger. So that's just a me thing. And I'm going to start calling that on out on all knives uh just so you can see like this all t8 the only thing is t6 like i said pocket clip screws that don't have to necessarily be as tight so um bigger screws less of them you know what i mean so there you go guys i do love this knife uh it's got to go back to its home so let's turn this around do some final thoughts and send you out about your day so yeah lots of really good things about this knife very few negatives then the negative things 100 percent are things just that i fine. Uh, most people are not going to have those issues. I just like to point them out, you know, positives and negatives. There's other people that may have the same things. It happens, the, the thing of the knife rolling happens a lot in thinner knives. So not a knock against the knife. It's an American knife. One of the best American made knives you're going to get. Uh, I love the TRM Shadow. That was definitely up there almost knife of the year a year or two ago. I, I love it. That's an amazing knife. So TRM makes amazing products. So that's it on this one, guys. You know what to do. Like the videos, share, subscribe. Make sure you've got notifications turned on your device. If you want to support the channel financially, I dropped a coffee brand coffee add in. Temper Trail is also a channel sponsor. You can use the coffee brand coffee link down below for the discount. Uh, Temper Trail, use the coupon code Crazy Sharp. Nathan is doing a lot of stuff. He's doing hand stitched leather wallets. He's making kilties for boots. The best laces you're ever going to find for boots. He's got more stuff planned and coming. He's also the designer of the Enigma multi tool. You can use coupon code Crazy Sharp, all one word there to save 5%. You can also use that coupon code at uh, Rosecraft Knives and Farumforge Knifeworks.com. Save you five for uh, those are coupon codes you can use across the board. I'm working on getting more discount codes for you guys and new affiliate links. Uh, I have also got an Amazon store down below. Take that link, pin it to your browser, use it for any shopping you're going to do. It saves, it doesn't, it doesn't save you money. I'm sorry. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it definitely supports the channel. It makes Jeff Bezos give me a little bit of money and you don't even have to take off your bathrobe to do it. Um, and I have got a membership. It's all tier based. This is my preferred method. Everyone gets early access to videos the second I post them. Everyone gets exclusive content. Everyone has access to the Gilded server, which is just like Discord. It's a private Discord for the paying members. The baseline and premium guys are entered into giveaways that I do for them and I announce on the Gilded server. And the premium guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series here on YouTube behind the paywall. Guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comments section if it's your birthday happy birthday and i'll see you in the next video